Welcome to another Happy Podcast, the only one of its kind in the world. My name is Nathan. I'm joined by Lawrence, uh, a.k.a. Lynx, and uh, my actual name is Lightning, so just forget what I said there. Um, (laughs) And yes, we're about to jack off and jack in to... (sighs) The, <laughs> the is this going to be a carryover? Will this end when the May is over? I told you it's our catchphrase for the Matrix, and because that's what we're doing, Lawrence, we're doing the Matrix. Hello, hello. Well, since you asked, Nathan, this is the show where we we get together and we talk about all things uh, pop culture. We like to talk about movies, TV shows, games. No, none of this is no. true. We talk only about the Matrix. That's true. Yeah. Well, yeah. for this month. Yeah, I, I think next we should do the Fast and the Furious, and then just spend the next ten weeks um, just going through <laughs> those movies. I've 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 booked in for Fast X in 4DX. I'm slightly terrified. Why? I'm actually Why? just going to get an injury. What? Why would you do that? <laughs> just a bit of fun, isn't it? Like they're what? they're fucking they're movies that if I'm if it's giving me a fucking like headache at the time, it's probably going to like make me enjoy it more. Like they're movies you want to be thrown around to. One of the few. I, I cannot imagine going to see a movie in 4DX is a pleasant experience for anyone. It's good, but I made the mistake of buying popcorn the last time I did it, and then like the trailers were on, and I was getting thrown around, and I lost a large portion of my popcorn because of it. So that that was frustrating. That puts me. I'm here. I'm here to watch a movie, not ride a fucking roller coaster. Like yeah, but some movies are like roller, co- like Fast and Furious. That's a that is a roller coaster movie. I don't want to watch it on a roller coaster though. <laughs> yeah, but it's 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 immersive. I I look, I'll I'll take your point. There's a lot of movies I would rather die than see it in that format. But some are just silly. Some are fun. How would After Sun work? I'm like... She probably just wouldn't move. <laughs> yeah. There's no really bombastic thrills, are there? <laughs> the daughter would jump in the pool, and you might get a little jet of water, and that's about it, really. Awful. Any chance to dig up after sun? Fuck off. I will take it. It's my, it's uh, my personal vendetta. So I wanted to check in, uh, or check check in and ch- check off. Jack in and jack off. Check offs, jack off. Okay. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah. Uh, pl- play the klaxons, you know the thing. I like how that's just become the theme. Uh, this is another happy revenue, and a special shout out to... Uh, Friend of the show Ben Davis, uh, who has <laughs> who has messaged me this week to say that he's a big fan of us just going every week. We have no money. <laughs> so, I, I didn't even know he listened regularly. I didn't know, I didn't know Ben listened to this. Well, he, he does. Ben's just like a friend from our personal lives. So yes, yeah. it's weird. <laughs> yeah, Ben is weird. Go away. Stop <laughs> listening. Uh, no, but what, what me and Nathan do, obviously, we are in the lucrative game of podcasting, uh, yes. and we make so much cheddar Fat cheese. Fat stacks, baby. Fat stacks. It's it's hard to comprehend just how much money we make, but that's what we do, because we keep it honest, uh, and, and we keep an open discourse about our earnings with you. We um, like to be transparent, unlike certain billionaires and, you know, potential presidents who won't publish their tax returns and all this sort of stuff. We are... We're very transparent in the amount of money that we are making. So our podcasting platform of choice, Acast, are a Swedish company. Yes. Um, now, Nathan, last week we were sat on, uh, I can't remember, to, to the to the minute uh, krona, but we had 17 krona. Yes. Uh, and that was uh, that was quite, that, that it was a good milestone for us because we just kind of tipped it over a pound. Yes, one pound thirty to be exact, I believe. A tidy sum. Yes. Um, this week we have, a, well, thus far we've accumulated twenty one eighty nine Swedish krona. <laughs> okay. Like as soon as money would be enough to buy more than one round of drinks at a pub, that's when we should stop this segment because <laughs> then it becomes look at us. Ooh, we we got twenty quid out of the podcast. <laughs> yeah, twenty one eighty nine Swedish krona, um, which is funnily enough. Uh, one pound and sixty nine pence. Hey, <laughs> funny sex number. Funny sex number. Um, all right, okay. One pound sixty nine. What could we get for one pound sixty nine if we were to put our funds together? Um, we could get three Freddo frogs, maybe. Um, 
Yeah, depending on what the price of them are these days. They usually, I mean, aren't they like 50p or something now? I don't know. We're so out of touch because obviously we live the high life. <laughs> it's been a while <laughs> it's since true. one of us. It's been a while since I've sent my butler in to get a Freddo for me. Um, <laughs> what else could we do? One sixty nine. Um, we could go to you know shopping centres have those terrible twenty p sweet machines. Oh yeah, yeah. We could we could have a we could have a go on them. Those sweets are fucking disgusting. We could. Oh, there's, I'll be honest. There's not a lot we can do, especially <laughs> no, we, uh, we... <laughs> in twenty twenty three. During the cost of living crisis. It seems the lucrative game of podcasting isn't quite as rewarding as we <laughs> hoped. No, we're joking. We're millionaires. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, we forgot to mention this is £1.69 onto our pre-existing £4 billion that, our, um, that this specific podcast has made. Yeah, our exclusivity deal that we signed with whatever platform you're listening on right now. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. You can only get it here. Yeah, we... Don't, don't look anywhere else. <laughs> Lawrence, I have very long hair. You do. I haven't had a haircut in about two years now, just because I don't know. I'm severely depressed, so <laughs> I <laughs> right nice. So I just haven't been to... all that money, Nathan. And... <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can't buy you happiness, everyone. So uh, I just haven't had a haircut in two years. I don't know why. I just haven't. It's very long now. Uh, one day I just decided no more haircuts, and now here I am. I do remember that day, and I was thinking you would fold, and here I am. I didn't realise how long it actually was um, until today. I actually caught a glimpse of myself because I usually actually wear it up. I caught like a glimpse of myself, like in the mirror from the side, and it like it actually goes down to like my upper middle back, like to like just between my shoulder blades. Jesus. Yeah, it's very long now. That's girl hair length. <laughs> I'm a girl. Oh, you're such a girl. To quote um, Matt Smith's first line in Doctor Who. Yeah, we should have saved that one for the other podcast. His actual first line is the name of our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I, to, be, to be fair, it was a shock when Matt's, when David Tennant regenerated and then Matt Smith immediately screamed, another happy pod out loud. <laughs> Not this podcast. <laughs> I was quite surprised. <laughs> Maybe I'll shave it all off for my 30th birthday. Why? Why would you do that on your th- That's the day you want to look younger, not older. I'll shave my head on my 30th birthday and just accept that the tides are turning. I think a shaved head for me is on the cards within the next year or so. I reckon so. Getting a bit thin up there. Yeah, that, and that's the, that's the worst thing about it. Because it's like mm. you can just about pull it off on the front and at the back. And then you, you run your hands through the back of your hair and I'm like, why can't all this be up there? You ever put like a bald filter on yourself just to see how it would look? Yeah. Like a bald, like, TikTok filter or some shit? Of course. How's it looking? Well, no, we don't need to go into it. <laughs> How's it looking? <laughs> so yeah, let's just say that you... I've done it. You see, I, I also did it, and to, it, to me, it looks suspiciously good. Like, mm. I don't know I don't know if I can try I think it might be, like, some kind of AI smoothing or something, because I, I don't think it would look that good, man. They did, To be fair, like, when they... You can just add on, like, a bald head, but they also, like, fucking... Yeah, they do smooth out everything. They'll get rid of some, like, I don't know, some redness or anything, won't they? Yeah, because what if you got, like, a weird, like, I don't know, like, skin birthmark or some shit that you don't even know about? No, luckily for me, I have shaved my head before. That's true. That's true. When I met you, you were a big bald head. You look like a, a big racist. <laughs> yeah, that's true, yeah. Lawrence, we've been talking for 14 minutes now, and we have oh my started God. talking about... <laughs> <laughs> we're catching up we're chatting <laughs> we're having a little chat guys this is <laughs> this normal this bollocks normally happens at the end <laughs> this is this is why you come to the the podcast um anyway what are we doing uh we are on the third matrix movie we are three three bad boys in uh this one's called revolutions it feels like it should be resolutions maybe um what is what is a revolution um, I, well, I, a revolution is like a, like a fight, isn't it? Like a, the revolutionary war is when you like, you overthrow like an oppressive government or some shit. But that doesn't really happen in this. They just make a final stand. Yeah, well, yeah, that's kind of a revolution. They're how standing up against hmm. the machines. I mean, they're standing up against the machines because they have to, because the machines are coming to them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they don't have much of a choice in the matter. It's it's more like the machines are having the revolution of just being like, We're sick of you being here passively. Yeah. Um I I've I haven't watched this movie in probably a good ten years or so. Um, okay. And I still haven't. 
Uh, no, that's not true. I watched it the other night. Um, yes, I haven't watched it, and I forgot how little happens in this movie. It's it, like last week when we said Reloaded and Revolutions, they're basically just like one big movie. It's like, that's yeah. true. This is just, this whole movie is just one big third act. Yeah, I think there's a, there is a bit of setup, but from like, from like the middle onwards, it's just like, it's a war. I, 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 even before that, man, I think it's like, it's like, for, I, I was joking a little bit before we started, but we did say it's, it's like basically just three very long scenes. Yeah, just cut together. It's, it's strange how um, how little the the actual Matrix appears in this movie. I And I, I quite like that. I had a note uh, I was going to get to a bit later on, but this is as good a time as any. Um, I like that we have that distance from the Matrix so that by the time that we get back there, when Neo goes back there, Agent Smith is like, it's Smith World now. Yeah, he's <laughs> like, I've made it my the, place. He's taken over the entire fucking town. Is the Matrix just that one city? Uh, interesting. I don't know. Because presumably they would have spoken about like, you know, they all work like boring office jobs. Presumably, they'd be like, "Oh, I'd like to get away this year." There's no sun in the Matrix, is there? Have you seen? Have you seen anyone say that? No, but like, you have to imagine the small talk that would go on in those little offices, in all those little cubicles. Yeah, but we haven't seen it, so as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't exist. It's true. Yeah, because it, 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 there's not really. I can't imagine it looking anything other than a miserable New York City. It's not. It's Sydney. Is it supposed to be Sydney? No, but it's shot in Sydney. I don't know where this was proven. I remember it, uh, James and Mason saying it in their caravan episode. It's apparently like in the Middle East. That's where the actual Matrix is. No, that's that's where the um, Machine City is and, and Zion. I guess it is just this city. Agent Smith hasn't taken over the entire world. Well, there is, I, I, yeah, I think the Matrix is kind of limited to this like one city, maybe like the outer suburbs. And there's the mountains and stuff because Neo was there in the last one. That highway, they're going somewhere. Yeah, but you look in the background and it's just more city that they're going Maybe to. they're all going in a long loop. It's <laughs> yeah, just like the road is so long it just circles back. Just one big fucking ring road. <laughs> We're the driving programs. We just <laughs> circle all day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I guess so. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd never I'd never really considered it. That's going to break my brain even more. Yeah, maybe. Does the fourth movie do that? Anything with that? Um, I don't know. I really cannot remember much of the fourth movie. Um, yeah. Who knows? Um, so Neo's, um, he's jacked off, but he's not jacked in. But he is jacked in, metaphorically speaking, yeah. somehow. He can he can still, he's like in this weird limbo space. He's in a coma. Yeah. On a ship in Saudi Arabia, I guess. But he's also at a train station or something in the Matrix. Which is the liminal space between I, th- I think it's like where the Merovingian smuggles shit in and out I, is that kind of what it was getting at yeah maybe I don't know we're the worst two people yeah. to talk about these yeah. movies don't listen to this man what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did like that um, it's just when you look at it it just becomes so crystal crystally fucking apparently clear uh, how much <laughs> Deathly Hallows stole from other things <laughs> better things yeah like, whoa, Harry's in the dead people space. It's the train station, all in white. <laughs> oh, where have I fucking seen that before? Um, before we get to that, I just wanted it's almost to... almost as if the person who wrote that series is terrible and a bad writer. Yeah, it's, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> it's very true. Yeah. She's had one mega hit, and then that's about it. The Agent Smith in the, th- in the thing, right, in the ship, Bane as Agent Smith. Yes. It's Among Us, right? (laughs) (laughs) He's running around. He's infiltrating a ship of survivors and he's trying to pick them (laughs) off one by one. And he's pretending to be one of them. That's Among Us. Uh... That's okay. among you know you just annoyed you didn't think of it. That's among us. And no, you know it. no, and well, I see what you're saying. And yes, that premise, yes, that is among us. I'm just struggling with the fact that that's not necessarily the premise. He's not sneaking around killing off people one by one, is he? He kills one person. Yeah, but then he tries Trinity. Then he tries Neo. But he's he's on another ship by that point, and they don't even know he's there. That's true. Yeah. Too many ships. Apparently there's too few ships, according to Zion, but in my mind there's too many. I don't know, I can't keep up with them. There are too few ships. Captain uh, Niobe of um, Enter the Matrix. Did you ever play Enter the Matrix? No, but I've watched too much footage of it. It's such a good game, man. It was so good. I really want them to like do a remaster of it. 
because they like they like filmed they like filmed like a lot of shit for it um with jada pickett smith and those two other guys um is this the one where morpheus gets assassinated but not really no no that's the matrix online uh, okay yeah no the en- enter the matrix was a ps2 game and it was basically like the story of what niobe and ghost were up to during like the matrix reloaded basically okay yeah, it's and it's very good, and they like sh- they like shot a shitload of stuff for it as well while they were shooting these movies. Was it just a, like a like the game graphics and it cut to like movie scenes? Yeah, yeah, like cut That's scenes cool. would just be like scenes from this. That's quite sick, actually. To be fair, it was and it was a really good game because it was basically two whole fucking games because you could yeah. play it as Niobe. And then you have like basically one storyline, and you play it that way. And then you, or you could play it as a Ghost, who has like different abilities and different fighting styles, and you can play it that way and stuff. It was a really good game. It was really good. There's a lot of PS2 ones I wish would get like a bit of, not even just the remaster, because that's part of their charm that they just look like ass. But like, I wish there was a way I could play a lot of them <laughs> yeah. now, without spending like thirty pound on a nerd machine or something that can do games or something. A nerd machine. What are they called? Uh, an emulator. You must be one of them nerds I've heard about, if you know what that is. <laughs> Fucking hell. A nerd um, machine. We, we, this, this may seem like I'm veering off topic, but we have spoken about the movie Spectre of the James Bond franchise. And do you remember a specific scene we referenced? Uh, a very horny scene where a woman is being seduced and talking about her dead husband's business affairs. Uh, yeah, it was very uncomfortable. Same woman as the Merovingian's wife, Monica Belushi, I think her name is. Oh, really? It's the same woman. I just thought it was interesting that she's had two ex- inexplicably horny scenes that are featured on this podcast. Oh, this movie is a lot less horny than The Matrix mm. Reloaded. No one's got time for shagging it. No, there's like I say, it's the third act. There's no time for shagging. Everyone's mm. got to like save the world or whatever. The horniest it gets is that we go to like this weird S&M latex fetish mm. nightclub that the Merovingian owns um, and and everyone's just in like gimp masks and fucking full body suits <laughs> and everything and um, and the Merovingian's wife is there and she does nothing and says nothing apart from at one point she goes she's in love she'll kill us all and then that's <laughs> it <laughs> I, was there any like consequence from like her betraying all of or maybe she's just been like reprogrammed. Maybe that's the thing why she's so quiet. Maybe she's been like reset by him or something. <laughs> he's put her on mute. Just... But but that's, that's probably <laughs> what happened though. <laughs> he's right? made the switch. <laughs> like uh, but like yeah, because she's obviously just a different character. Like she's, is she? She's, no, she's she the same most... person. But she was the same. She just didn't say anything. Yeah, but the 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 woman that was in Reloaded would have been popping off. She'd have she'd have had stuff to say. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, it, so they set it up. The stakes are the stakes are established. There's 20 hours until machines attack Zion. Yeah. Which is pretty scary. Yeah. Because Neo's considering Neo's fucking fucking about in a train station or whatever, and then they're like, "Oh, let's go see the Oracle." And you're like, "Really, Morpheus? Like, we're all gonna die in 20 hours?" I'm like, no, I need to see the Oracle. All right. And then the Oracle's here, and she's like, "I'm a different woman." Um. <laughs> 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 Tragically so because the previous one passed away, but yeah. Oh, is that why? <laughs> yeah, uh, they... <laughs> I was going. I was like, well, what's going on there? Um, yeah, the the first the first actress uh, who was really really good. She uh, she died, and um, I think this one's equally as great though. I think she's she brings like a more of a somberness to it, but she's still very good. She's um, I feel like this one's a bigger actress because I recognise this one from somewhere, but mm. she's definitely been in other stuff. So uh, let's let's start with the train station. Twenty seven minutes into the podcast, um, yeah. So well, what what do you think <laughs> about the little the little conversation Neo has with the program and his family? And he's like, "Look, man, I don't I don't know where you are, but I love love, and I fucking I love <laughs> my daughter. I love my wife. Um, I don't know how programs have daughters and wives, but hey, it's, it's what I do, and I love it. Yeah, I, I'll be honest. The, everything with the child, I'm not. I've seen this movie twice. Twice. And I'm still not certain I get it. Okay. Because I I think maybe the next film will give me some answers, because I know that... Um... Spoiler alert. No spoilers. Oh, yeah. Maybe someone hasn't watched it yet. That's true. That's true. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I, I'm not entirely certain. I like it. I think everyone's, you know, having given a good performance in that scene. I just don't really know what it's getting at. Um, 
think it's just the. I don't think it's necessarily getting at anything massive. More just the importance of love and how uh, it's it's something which shouldn't be taken for granted. It shouldn't be ignored, and it's um it, it's something that should also be taken in cons- into consideration when you're when uh, Neo is is thinking about how to save the day or some shit. But I don't know if that's true. I I think there's I do think there's a very interesting line uh, where because obviously Neo is kind of woken up by the daughter who's being like a, a child of that age just asking questions and yes kind of kind of jumping around him and stuff um, and the, the the dad says I'm sorry she's still very curious which I thought was quite a just a, like an, an apt line of like I don't know like humans being content with shutting up and normally and not asking. Yeah. Like the ignorance that was kind of explored in the first movie of, you know, would you would you kind of be willfully blind if you knew what the alternative was? The idea of a program getting curious, like a a program that's not that old and it's Yeah. It's try I guess the program is trying to figure out what its purpose is and what it does and I guess so, but then she has a connection to the Oracle, which again I'm not certain what the connection there is either. I think that's more just the Oracle kind of like looks after people, I guess. I don't know. So we it's an odd movie this. It's an odd movie. I don't know how it stands as a conclusion to everything. I'm both satisfied immensely, but also not. Um, I'm I'm kind of not. I think it's the weakest of the three, really. I I agree, it's the weakest. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I I, I, I don't know how how satisfying it is as a conclusion. Um. Yeah. I mean, technically, it's not a conclusion anymore. But, but like. Well, I think it still is because the fourth one still was a very different approach. I feel like it is. It still is the trilogy capper, isn't it? Like it's. Yeah. Yeah. It's the conclusion to like this part of it, at least. Like yeah. the same way, Return of the Jedi is a conclusion to the the um the original yeah. trilogy and stuff. Speaking of Star Wars, the Train Man is here, and he's the big head guy from uh, from of the Sith. Uh, Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, he is. He's the power yeah. guy, and he's also um he's in. I know he's in some Mad Max stuff. I've seen one Mad Max movie, and it's the one that everyone else has seen. Um, <laughs> Fury Road. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that is the one that everyone else has <laughs> yeah, seen. Absolutely. The rest of them are reserved for fathers, and that is it. <laughs> yeah. Your dad's have an seen the other one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they love them. My dad loves the Mad Max movies, but I've never you seen You can't them. not. Yeah. How could you not love the Mad Max movies that we've all seen? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Mad March. Oh, yeah, there's some in there. See, I'm good at these. We recently yeah. discovered you or not. Oh, shut um, up. <laughs> Insert like four minutes worth of voice notes here that we that we sent back and forth to each other arguing about my talent in this field. Um right, so so he's stuck. Um anyway, the, the train the train man shows up and he's like, I've got powers here because I made this train station and Neo's like, Good for you, you made a fucking train station. That's kind of interesting though. Like he's he's basically Neo down here because he made it himself. He's Neo in this one room. Listen, Neo, I can come down here whenever I want and fly in this hundred square meters I've made myself. Yeah. He's like, Bill, he's uh, he's basically built himself his own little Minecraft server. Yeah. Like, (laughs) he turns on God mode. Yeah, he's on God mode. And he can fly around. He can instantly get like a diamond pickaxe or whatever. Yeah. And and everyone else has to just like punch wood for three hours. While he goes around and then just destroys all their stuff. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I like that concept, but I feel like we've kind of already explored it with the Merovingian. I know not in that direct way, but like he was also a guy that owned this corner of the Matrix and did whatever the fuck he wanted to. Yeah. yeah um. Maybe. So I, I, I don't know. I feel like he's an extremely minor antagonist. I think it was just Neo should have a fight early doors. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Is. It's not really much of a fight, is it? Not really. More, they just throw each other at a wall a few times. It just gets pushed, and then that's it. Yeah, it's 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 an odd one. But so to get to get him out of it, um, Neo's there. I, I do like that. He's just he's sat on the bench, and he's like, <laughs> think, think. You can get yourself out of this. And then Trinity just shows up in a train. He's like, what are you doing? <laughs> Come on, yeah. a, you know it's a fucking war. <laughs> you're sitting, you're dicking around at the train station. But even um, then, he's like, he gets out of the coma, and he's like, oh, what was that? Like sixteen hours until the machines arrive. Right, all right. I gotta go have a think. 
by myself. <laughs> yeah. right, you all you all just hang tight for a minute. Um I'm just gonna go just in my room for a couple of hours and just see what the best option is. Alright, love you, bye. He's truly embraced the kind of like the deity Jesus role where like people are like please we need you and he's like i'll pray on this <laughs> yeah. and it's like bro th- we need you now <laughs> yeah <laughs> very unhelpful very unhelpful really yeah for the for the most part um i do like that trinity is like you you feel the third movie stakes i like that trinity like puts a gun to the merovingian's head gets like several aimed at hers and everyone mm. else's and the merovingian's like you you willing to die for this and she's like yeah dude because i'm dead anyway yeah, yeah. Like, if I don't die for it, I'm just going to die tomorrow anyways. It is a very good moment. I do like that. And I, and I like the little uh, fight before that moment um, with Seraph and um, um, Morpheus and Trinity when they, like, mm. they're in the elevator and he's just like, uh, if we're lucky, there'll be, like, one man on the coat check and we'll be able to hand in our guns and just slip past. And then Trinity's like, if we're unlucky, there will be many men. And then the doors just open and just chaos <laughs> ensues. It's yeah. it's very good. And then everyone's like running up the walls and they're on the ceiling. And it's, I don't know what's going on, but I enjoy it. I, I enjoy it too. If I could control physics, I'd be doing so much more crazy shit than climbing up the wall. <laughs> I do like that there are two guards yeah. that also, like, they immediately start getting like bu- bullets riddled their way by like all three of them. And then they're like, quickly to cover but they run up the wall and then go behind the wall and i'm like the wall is still next to you on the ground just step to the step to the right and you'll be good yeah. <laughs> like i do feel like sometimes they're like we're in the matrix so if we're running we've got to run fucking cool like we've yeah. got to run in a cool way well they do they're gonna be cool i i can't remember if I'm, I'm doing a lot of like speculating to the fourth one again but i can't remember if they keep the vibe of the matrix the same because i know it's a lot more as glossy like, and shinier as in like the sort of like 90s aesthetic and stuff yeah like the 90s green. i don't think they do no i think the yeah i i actually i think i don't think i don't think like the green tint is there in mm. the newer one and i think it's it's a more updated look it's not necessarily a 90s sort of look um, i suppose because it has been it's a different matrix isn't it is it? a different matrix so it kind of makes sense it's not yeah. the same program or whatever so but i guess we'll talk more about that next week but yeah so neo's out um neo's out um and smith is look he's fucking going insane like he is like going well fuck him i'm gonna turn everyone into me because that's that's what I do. Let's go see the Oracle. All right. Yeah. Let's go make the Oracle into me. Because why not? And, and I just I love the moment. Uh, again, fuck it. We said this last week. Hugo Weaving, so good. And he's got just such a great way of speaking. Just a great rhythm and poetry to his mm. to his dialogue, which is so good. I, I just love the moment where he's just in front of her in the kitchen, and he just like smashes like a va- a plate of cookies against the wall and he's like you knew I was going to do that but did yeah. you because then you put that plate of cookies and sat right there looking at me like this and yeah. it's just it's so unhinged and just a man clearly having a mental breakdown I <laughs> yeah I, I'm a massive massive fan about how like all the antagonists in this are just men not getting what they want yeah <laughs> Like the Merovingian's like, my wife keeps talking to other people about me. And Agent Smith's like, I don't want to be here. This sucks. I'm going to make everything me because at least I don't suck. Like, <laughs> and it's like, what I love about Agent Smith is he's so, he's so fucking like, it's so funny because like the evolution of like what he becomes, he's the embodiment of like, I don't like this place, but I'm, I like, I'm, and I'm going to change it to make it more what I want. But he's just mm. like, He's trying to solve the problem of the Matrix by just inadvertently making such a bigger problem out of the Matrix. Yeah. He's... Like, at least before Neo could land and then just walk about the city. Yeah. Whereas now he lands and there's just 20 Agent Smiths like, you're right, man. We know we know why you're here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, just a very, very... He, you're right, he is unhinged. And... and the I wrote down the actor's mm-hmm. name because he's also unhinged in the real world now in Zion. Yeah, he's Bane. He's got like different consciousnesses, I guess. I think he has to have had any because like he was having a twenty thousand of him were having a fight with Neo last week. So yeah, but yeah, it's true. Yeah, 
Yeah, I guess I think it's like the agent thing. They can kind of just the main agent Smith can just jump into any of the autopilot agent Smiths. Yeah, when they need to. But yeah, I get because the Bane one is. Do I think maybe real agent Smith is in Zion doing his thing, mm-hmm. and he's just put the rest of them on like door canvassing duty like you knock on someone's yeah. door they answer it and he's just like you're me now yeah yeah maybe because <laughs> they've got shit to like the amount of them later on that... I, I guess it, i don't think it necessarily matters like which one the original is because they're all like they're all him really there's no like smith yeah. prime really and like he's the one he's the main one or whatever because even the one neo fights at the end like that's the one he turns into the oracle well yeah and that's the um yeah, I, I suppose that's true, actually, yeah. So, like, so there's no, like, Smith Prime or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I so, saw, yeah, they all just kind of function as one, like, one goal. But anyway, Bane, Bane is Smith, um, mm. and he's so good, man. He's so yeah. good. He manages to pick up that same, like, poetry and cadence, just so good. He's He's got, like, a fucking, a way about him. Yeah. That if you just shut your eyes, it's Agent Smith. Yeah. Like he he's I tell you what he is the argument, and I know we've kind of we I think we land on the same thing of this. He's the argument of why recasting not identical people, but someone that exudes the vibe of someone. Mm. Like Olden Ironreich for Han Solo, they didn't cast that one impressionist that sounded exactly like Harrison Ford. They cast yeah. him, yeah, exactly, because he gives off the vibe. And this guy, like, he's he's perfect. Yeah, yeah, he is. He is really good. Like, the fact that Neo didn't immediately clock that it was Smith is just fucking absurd. Because he's like, yeah. Mr. Anderson. Yeah. <laughs> Me and, and Mr. Anderson he's like, know that appearances can be deceiving. Yeah, he's like, he's doing little, like, puns and clues and stuff. And Neo's like, it it can't be. <laughs> yeah. What's going on? <laughs> I'll tell you what, I've got some fucking... We we said nice things about Keanu, Reeve, uh, Keanu Reeves last week, so I feel like I've earned... Oh, no. Keanu slander on the pod? Not Keanu slander, but some what extra takes needed, surely. Do you want to go now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're 40 okay. minutes in, man. <laughs> yeah, it's true, it's true. Um, <laughs> just let, No, it's the, it's the slow pan to reveal that Trinity has been impaled by a metal rod. Yeah. Well, to be fair, he is blind. Yeah, I know. I know, And I know he can't see. That's not the thing. But he feels it. Yeah. Because he goes, what's, what's wrong, Trinity? Yeah. And she's like, I can't go with you. I've gone as far as I can go. And he feels the pipe. And then he just, in the blandest way possible, he goes, oh, no. Yeah. And it's like, it's the woman you love's dead, and, like, dying in front of you. And you're like, oh, God. Look, oh, we... no. <laughs> the, um... The... This sucks. <laughs> The heavy emotional stuff, it's not necessarily Keanu's strong suit, is it? Like, no. But... <laughs> There's a reason I... why he's good in John Wick. Because he just like yells and shoots people, <laughs> basically. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like I get it, but yeah, I, I still think like that, that scene works in itself, though. Because just fucking Carrie Ann Moss, and we haven't spoken about her enough as well throughout all of these, but She's, She's great. phenomenal. So good. Yeah, and she just like it's it it's the way it kind of at some point in this movie I considered maybe it's like the different hairstyles that she has when she's in Zion and in the Matrix and stuff. But yeah. like when you're a child, you just think of like the caricature, the cool nineties sunglasses lady. Yeah. That does the big kicks. But like when she's in Zion and Trinity is just being Trinity, like and all of that kind of bravado is dropped. She's like it's such a human performance from her. And and it feels so vulnerable and desperate. Yeah. And I, yeah, and I just I think she's she's really good. She's she's definitely able to carry Keanu through some of those moments. She is really good, which is why like it was I I forgot that she died in this movie. So when she mm. did die, I was like, oh, I, that's a real fucking bummer actually, because like now we've now we've lost quite a big like emotional crux and and are just a really good performer really. Now we're, yeah. We have someone to balance out Keanu's. What's going on? Um, <laughs> and you and, feel it once she's out of the movie as well. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and like that moment when they're flying through Machine City and they break through the clouds and she sees like the sunlight for the first time and that sort of stuff. Great moment, mm. really good. Um, yeah, shame she died. I li- I like that they with that kind of like seeing the sun and everything. They don't stick to like a regular 
normal sky. Like it doesn't, it still doesn't feel like our world. Yeah. It, it still, it feels like this kind of like matte painting of a sunset. Yeah. And it's, it's really, really lovely to see. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I, I've got the, let, let's talk about when Neo kind of discovers Agent Smith as Bane. Yeah. Um, cause Killers, fight, fryers, burn as alive. I love that moment. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> but that, that fight in itself, like it's, it's the return to form that I didn't get last week. All right. Like it's just two men beating the fuck out of each other with anything they can find. Yeah. And like, yeah, Keanu Reeves is still technically a, a martial arts whiz and all of this. Yeah. And, and and maybe he does still have some degree of his powers in Zion. But for the most part, it's just two men fucking like sucker punching each other until yeah. one of them spits out a tooth or whatever. Yeah. Um, And I think it's less like, because obviously the last one, it was so, I think you said it was like, like thwippy and quick. Yeah. Yeah. So and a bit, this one, a bit floaty and... um. Yeah. Yeah. There was no real weight to the fight, really. Mm. And and this one this one does kind of Again it speaks to like Smith's thing of like he wants nothing more than to end it, but like does yeah. he? Because he like plays with his prey, like he taunts the people he's about to kill. Yeah. Like he's in that room with the the woman that's checking up on him thinking he's Bane and he like waits. Like he could, like he's got shit to do. He could just stab her and immediately leave. He can't resist just having fun with it, though. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's performative. Like. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, and I just I love that fucking aspect of him where he's like, I just can't help but indulge myself in this a minute. Yes, killers, friars, burn us alive. Yeah, <laughs> and, so and, that, and when he when he's got that, and like when he when he fucking blinds Neo. Yeah. And it's walking like that, that fucking the electricity, like turning the flickering, the lights on and off. And when the lights flicker, you just see him grinning with his blood stakes, like soaked mouth. He's playing with Neo. Yeah. Yeah. He is a hundred percent. It's great. And it's ultimately his downfall really, hmm. because like, instead of just like taking his chance, he's like, Oh, I'm going to lure Neo into the dark and have this big <laughs> moment where he's blind anyway, man. What are you doing? But he's, yeah. still, he's just like, yes, come Neo, follow my voice into the dark. And then he's like, I can see you. And it's just a great moment. The fucking, just the crowbar straight to the fucking head and just clean. I don't, he, I don't think he actually decapitated him. I think that was just like the fucking visualization of it. But just the fucking clean. Whoosh, so good. Yeah. I don't think he, yeah, because in Zion, he's still dealing with a real person's body. Yes. And like, you don't. You can't really decapitate someone with a crowbar. I'm presuming you could just smash them I, in a bit. I feel like it was more like the representation of Smith being killed, really. Like yeah. The Smith leaving Bane's body, I guess. The yeah. Smith the the code is broken. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. In in a, in a way, I like that. Uh, I like Neo's mate in Zion. He's his little weasel boy that was like in love with Neo last week. Oh, the kid. Yeah. He's now become like. Until the end, when he's like, everyone, everyone, Zion's safe. He's, he's become like a decent protagonist. All right, so I guess we're talking now about the fucking hour-long sequence where... We're, we're it everywhere does, here. It does not cut from the the fucking mech fight for a whole hour or whatever. Um, uh, look, the kid, man, he's like... He's, He's like, I want to fight in the war. He's like, how old are you? I'm 18. Like, no, you're not. You're 16. He's like, all right, yeah, I'm 16. I'm like... Mate, you look about 30. What the yeah, fuck? you're not <laughs> either of those ages. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And but he's, he's going up to like any New Zealand commander he can find. And he's like, please let me fight in the war. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, mm. Yeah, no, I, I, um, I do. That, that's, that's the kind of the pitfall of this. Because I think it's great stuff. Yeah. But I don't need over like 300 shots of one man in a mech fighting machines that all, by the way, just look like a swarm of like bots. See, I, I like the swarm. I think the swarm is very interesting. I like when the swarm mm. breaks through and there's a moment where they like it splits off into multiple streams and then all comes together and just like just like flies through like the main command deck and that sort of stuff. It's yeah. great and it's terrifying and they really do inflict some fucking massive disgusting and difficult to look at damage at times um uh, but i don't know i don't like the mechs man like they should be cool it should be fun but it's just it's just robot shooting and it's just 
and it's so long. It goes on for so long, man. So I, I, I had a thought during this, and it really, really made me enjoy the battle more. And I'm kind of annoyed I, I didn't see it this way before, because I feel like I was able to really sit, <laughs> strap myself in for that hour a bit better. Jack in and jack off for it. Yeah, exactly. Um, and boy, was I. Um, I no, I, I just in Zion, I enjoy the mechs, and yes, they're a bit silly. And yes, there like, is, I don't mind that they're silly. I just find them a little boring, I guess, really. But I see, I I like that kind of nature to them. That basically, I, I wrote down that the tech is still primitive. Like yeah. the mechs need to be manually reloaded. They're not yes. firing like infinite fucking ammo. And it's it, basically, it's interesting to think back. Like this is at least this iteration of Zion's first big war. Yeah. And like when you think back to like fucking like our big first fucking like war with actual weapons of mass destruction like world war one like with tanks and shit like that right not not technically weapons of mass destruction are like nukes oh no but like as in like all right weapons of weapons that are capable of mass killing yeah yeah rather than like fucking muskets and i've got a little knife on the end of my fucking stick or something um i i love the the how it kind of ties back to that because it's like those cannons would need to be manually reloaded in World War One. Like there would be just soldiers whose primary job it was to walk ammunition through trenches and shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I quite, I quite like that because it all does, despite the fact it's set like fucking centuries and centuries in the future, um, and they won't even know how many centuries because of all the wiped Zions that have come before. It's just really, really cool. And I quite enjoy that aspect of it. That said, it's extremely long. <laughs> It's so long, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I just don't like it. It's like, I like the visualization of it. I like how it looks. And like I say, I do like the swarm and the the sentinels. And the sentinels are terrifying. They really do manage to make the mm. sentinels very scary, um, which is good. But yeah, it just, it, it just goes on for too long and there's not enough variety to it, really. It's yeah. just the robots pointing up in the air, shooting... And then occasionally you'll see Link's wife shooting a missile or whatever, and and I don't I don't know if you quite get the scale of it either. It feels like there is one man against an army. Yeah, and yeah, whereas, it kind like, of does really. Yeah, yeah, I feel like they should have done a better job of kind of like maybe the other films did, and I just wasn't paying attention because I didn't think it was like that important to the rest of the story. But like the dock, like that's a crucial place for them. To, that's like their main battleground. And there's there's a big stress about losing it and, and remaining united on the dock. They can't lose the dock. Yeah. But then, like, it gets lost and it's not a problem. And well, it's a problem. It, it's just. I suppose it doesn't transpire into a problem. Like, yeah. It's, it's not an ideal situation for them, really. What's up um, with Locke as well? Locke's fucking. He's the biggest hypocrite ever. Which one's Locke? Locke is the. Uh, is he like the commander? Zealand fellow. Yeah, the commander. Yeah, Who's in Niobe's. Like the... Yeah, Niobe's cuck. Niobe's man's. Yeah, yeah. But let's be honest. We all know who Niobe's man's is. <laughs> and it's not yeah. him. Yeah, <laughs> it's not Locke. <laughs> but no, because no, because Locke, Locke, hmm. Locke kind of goes into the 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 one man army guy, the one man in the mech in the on the yeah. dock. Um, and and and. And he sends him a thing like Niobe's ship is going to be here in two minutes. You got two minutes to get that fucking door down. Yeah. And 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 he obviously can't hear him because he's dead. He's actually talking to the kid. But then they get the door down, and you know, great. They they fucking like EMP the Sentinels, and they bought themselves a little bit more time. Yeah. And they get there, and like Locke must have saw like Morpheus walk out, and he was like, "Well, you're all idiots. Actually, you can't think for five fucking seconds into the future." And it's like. I think what? that's kind. Of, I think that's kind of what it is. I think it is because I'm sure even during the battle, he's he wants ships to be there so they can have access to an EMP or something because they don't have an EMP. Um, yeah. So he he wants an EMP. Um, so yeah, but I, I think he is just genuinely being hypocritical and a bit petty about it all. Really, hey, I I do like that he gives off that. Like I do think he's an interesting character. Um, and I also quite like that. What, was he a big deal before this? The one man army mech man, as, as in the actor, uh, the character. Was he like? Not I can't really. remember him doing much in the second one. No, he didn't really do much. No, I, I, I like I like their kind of thing. 
And I like how he's like, you, he's speaking to the council and they're like, do you think we're going to survive? And he was like, you should ask uh, Morpheus that. He's the one that believes in miracles. Yeah. Um, I like that. And I like the fucking, the, the other one, uh, the other guy says something along the lines of like, uh, like, like belief or like hope or something is, isn't an indulgence that we have time for right now. I like when he gets fucking swarmed by all the Sentinels and his face is fucking tore open and it's fucking disgusting. It's hard to see it. Shout for- out <laughs> to the fucking makeup department because that was grim and I hated looking at it. It was nice of them to avoid his eyes, mouth and nose. <laughs> I will say the Sentinels took that into account. You're such a prick, Lawrence. <laughs> they are, said he's got are. to talk to someone after this. You are the biggest prick I've ever known. <laughs> no, just imagine the scene where the kid runs up to him and he's like, I don't know how to use these things. I never completed training. And it just cuts to that guy and he's like, Rawr! just screaming into a void of nothing face. I hate you so much. Um... <laughs> So Neo, so Neo, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> Neo um, goes and talks to the machines, and they all make the face of Colonel Sanders. Is it? Uh, I couldn't tell. I thought it was his voice. I think it's Colonel Sanders because he's the architect, isn't he? He's like, yeah, but does he like work under the machines? Does he work for? Does do the well, machines he is work them. for him? He is the machines. He is the machines. He's not a human. That's just how he appears in the Matrix, isn't it? So he he is head honcho. He designed the the arc the matrix. Yeah, but being the architect doesn't mean you're the the big machine chief, does it? No, not necessarily. But I don't know. I know what you mean. It did sound like him. Yeah, I don't know. I don't but like anyway. that they talk. All right. I just wanted to communicate. No, I, I know why they have to, <laughs> but I prefer the machines as a big, vague, ominous threat. Like when they're like when Neo walks up and he's like. Hey, I'm Neo. Can I go into the Matrix? And they're like, no, go away. It like it 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 removes some of their threat to me because <laughs> they're a big head. I'm like, what if I EMP this head? What? What? Why would that change if they couldn't talk? <laughs> I what don't, if you? No. I don't. Why? Who? If they were just there and just being silent, what if you EMP'd them then? I'd win. <laughs> exactly. It's the same scenario. I'm, I'm the one. There's no difference. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. It's just when they talk to Neo and they're like, we don't need your help. Like, it just, I don't know, it's, it's a bit, it's, it did remove some of their malice for me. Ding for Lawrence. No, that's not, uh, that's an, that's that's an a, opinion. No, nah, that's a ding, that's a ding. Nah. Well, what do you make of them talking then? You love them, you wish they talked more. I do, yeah. I love them to talk. I want, con- <laughs> I want them to be having conversations all day long, mate. Um, I want to invite the, the machine onto the podcast. So I do, yeah. I want, I want to hear the machine's point of view. Machine, what do you think of Neo? I think Neo is a great guy. And sometimes I don't like him. Anyway, thanks for having me on the podcast. You're welcome, machine. Great. Well, great. Thanks there we for go. guesting. Um, he goes anyway. to talk to him, then what? Yeah, so he jacks off and he jacks in, yeah. um, and he and he was like, "Look, Smith is fucking everything up, mate. Like, have you seen the Matrix? It's all it's all messed up. The code is looking like it's broken. Everything's gone off. Um, and like, yeah, I don't know what's going on down there. So you better you better sort it out or whatever." Um, and he asks for peace in return. Does he? Yeah, they're like, "What do you Who want?" Does? Neo, the machines. Yeah, Neo asks for peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This this was the question I had for you. If the if the Matrix has gone to shit, yes, and <clears throat> Zion it needs to. It's normally you know it's about that time that Zion's getting rebooted anyway. Well, you keep talking about Zion getting rebooted. What do you mean by this? Well, it was the it, that was the ultimatum last week, wasn't it? In um with the architect, like every other the one has chose to eradicate Zion and go and start again with like twenty three women or. 16 men or something and re-breed a populace I you told me that because I didn't pick that but up what, I, I've n- the way I understand it is not rebooting Zion rebooting the Matrix yeah but N- Zion gets destroyed because he was like we've become quite efficient at destroying Zion at this point six times over oh I don't know I don't fucking know well, but, that, but that, that's my question that's the one thing I don't get and I'm sure the answer is so simple because like regular audiences fucking understand the end of this, and I think I must have missed something obvious. I don't think they do, but go on. <laughs> but the if if they're gonna destroy Zion as they're currently doing anyway, 
Yes. And if the Matrix has already gone to shit and they're going to need to start again, when Neo asks for peace, why don't they just go, no? And like, why do they need Neo? Why do they need him to strike a deal to stop Smith if they're just going to eradicate the Matrix anyway? But are they going to eradicate the Matrix? Well, yeah, because Neo, Neo, Neo wants everyone unplugged, doesn't he? Like, he wants an end. He wants peace. I don't think he wants to, like... But why Why are the machines... Well, cause everyone's dead in the Matrix. Bar Smith. Because he's infected everyone, or so we're led to believe. Oh, man, I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> there are <laughs> going to be people listening to this being like, you fucking morons. <laughs> why, how it's so easy to get? And we're just like, I don't <laughs> understand it. We're I'm not a fucking... I'm going to Google it. We're not intelligent, man. Lawrence is looking at Matrix Revolutions End and Explain. I I genuinely am because I feel like there's such a fucking... I I hate the fact that we've done three podcasts and we can't figure out the fucking ending. Should I play it through my iPad? Um, No, no, I'm going to find like a a Reddit or something that explains it. Oh, you love Reddit. That gets to the point. I don't know where this is from, but they say the peace deal would ensure that those who were plugged in would continue to supply the machines with power... At some point in the future, the machines would inevitably break the agreement. So they've just been sneaky. They're like, yeah, no worries, yeah. mate. So I, but, but then I guess there's, there are still people left in the Matrix. Welcome back to our minute-to-minute <laughs> analysis of Matrix Revolutions. Huh. Last time, Neo reached the truce with the machines, defeating Smith. I don't know. I If I couldn't understand fucking After Sun, um, then, like, I... Y- Look, we, we need Ben. Should I call him? Yeah, call him. Should I just ring him? He might be working, so I, I don't want to wind him up. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Ben is uh, the main and only editor of the uh, oh, Mr. Sunday on. Movies YouTube channel. I did, <laughs> I did see a post this week on The Great Maze that was like, hey, you know, it's how good the editing on this one is. Shout out to Ben, man. Ben's really good. Ben and Ben alone are so good. Uh, this fucking, <laughs> fucking piss me off, man. <laughs> fucking annoys the shit out of me, that does. <laughs> just fucking irks me. I know like, it does. It's not so not to like a serious degree, but it's just one of them things that just every time I see it, I'm like, nah, you fuck oh, whatever. <laughs> no answer. Sorry, everyone. We don't know. <laughs> the fight. The fights, yeah, the fight. Oh, the the big fight, the fight, the uh, the Neo versus Smith. Fucking the... lovely stuff. You're so right. You're <laughs> so right. And do you know what? I was going into it thinking I was going to hate the fight. It was just going to be another and yeah. uh, just boring and it's just a bit floaty. of that. It is a bit of that. But do you know what I really love about the fight? Like, when it first gets stuck... First of all, just the fucking aesthetic of it. Just the Mm. pouring rain and just the fucking streets lined with Smiths and he's in the windows and he's in the buildings and all this sort of terrifying... I love that he went, all of my guys are going to watch, by the way. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) He's brought them all out for the fight. (laughs) Yeah, and they're just going to watch. Do you reckon they all drew straws about which Smith would have the fight? No, I reckon he knew it was going to be Oracle Smith. I feel like he's like, now that he's taken over the Oracle, he's like, this is the main me. This is yeah, yeah. This is who I am. Um, but, but what was I saying? Um, yeah, so it looks great. Pouring rain, very cinematic, um, very interesting. Um, but then like when the fight gets started, there's, there's just these few certain shots where they're just like laying into each other, where they're just giving each other some quick punches. And then it does a slow-mo shot straight from the side, just mm. peering into them both. And then they get a few more quick punches in, and then it goes to the other side of them and does another slow-mo shot going in. So it's like they're reversing, going back and forth. And it's oh, it's so interesting. It's so good. It's It's a return to form from the first one where it just feels like a fucking Western standoff. Yes. Like, two of them fucking ready to quick draw, and by, by quick draw, I mean throw a big Superman punch <laughs> at one another. Mm. Um, the fuck, it's interesting you were talking about the aesthetic, like, because at one point, I don't know if you noticed this as well, um, I, I can just imagine what a horrible day filming it would have been. Oh, it would have been thick, awful. Yeah, yeah they're, they're doing kung fu, Smith's in a suit, Neo's in a fucking leather trench, right? yeah. like, and, and, and he's sitting in a pile of mud rain. Right, and, yeah. and at one point when Neo, when Smith is monologuing and Neo is on the ground, and he's like, "Why do you do it?" 
uh, Mr. Anderson, blah, blah, blah. And then it cuts to Neo, and in his left ear... Yeah. His left ear has filled with watery mud. Yeah. Like, the whole... Like, um, his ear hole has become a puddle. Yeah. And I was just like, that is the most uncomfortable fucking thing I can ever think of. Yeah, it's not great at all. You know when you get, like, water in your ear in your shower? Yeah, it it genuinely would be an awful filming situation. Would not Mm. have enjoyed that at all. But, hey, looks great, so fuck them. Um, Does look amazing, yeah. Yeah, and you're getting paid millions. Fucking deal with it, you cunts. Um, (laughs) Especially you, Keanu Reeves, even though you give most of it to charity. Fuck you. Yeah, fuck you, Keanu. So Smith can fly now. Yep. They Smith fly now. Fly. They fly now. Um, they have a fight for the sky. Um, yeah, and and I again fucking more just Hugo weaving, just killing it with every single line. And with the moment where he is, where they are in that fucking puddle, and he's and they're mono, and he's monologuing, and he just he cannot understand what's going on. He just can't understand like why Neo is doing this. He's like, is it? Purpose? Purpose to what? Purpose to live? Purpose to yeah. all this stuff. It's like every word that comes out of that man's mouth is just uh, it's fucking liquid gold. It's, I, we I love we it spoke all. last week about how he's like his speech pattern is like Morse code ish and like the the typing and then the cursor in and out of the screen kind of that's the cadence and rhythm of it. Yeah. And in this one it feels I don't know, maybe I'm like reading too much into this, but in this one, the way he kind of like you say like he he asks a question and then starts to immediately answer it but like strikes off his false attempts and he's yeah. like why do you do it is it love is it love is it love what is love for what are you loving like like and he just it builds on it it feels like if you give an ai a prompt mm. and it and it starts to just run with the concept until it levels out and figures what it wants yeah and i don't know i just maybe there's something in like the machines evolving kind of thing of it all but yeah just just a fucking inspired performance. Like, well, I like, I like that it's, it's also like, the, the fact that he overtook and overcome the Oracle. He sees that as a big win for him, but that's like mm. ultimately his downfall, really, because now he has this power of prophecy, or whatever. Like, I don't know exactly how it works, but like the Oracle was still able to foresee this, and so like. I guess there's like contingencies in place because like there's a moment when he's like I I see you standing there and I I stand here like this and I say what do I say and then it's like clearly like something the oracle says or whatever yeah yeah, yeah. no that she must have obviously she knew it was going to happen like that the whole series every time you see the oracle someone like you said earlier is like did you know that was going to happen Ooh, you use mm-hmm. your oracle powers and like in this one, the guy comes and and he's like Oracle, and he, and she's like finishing up making her cookies or something, and she's like, yeah, I know, I know, I'll get there. Yeah. Like she obviously knows what's about to happen. Um, yeah, it's it is just the hubris, like, it like it's what what what's that? What's that? Is it the King Midas thing? Like, flew flying to no, not that's Icarus. Too that's close Icarus. To the sun. Yeah. What's the Midas thing? Everything you t- oh, everything you touch turns to gold, but it will destroy you inevitably. I've literally never heard of this. King Midas, the everything he touches uh, turns to gold, and he ends up hugging his children, and they turn to gold and die. No, is that like uh, the guy who um, everything he touches turns to scales in those adverts? I'd imagine so. Yeah. <laughs> See, I should have gone with the more culturally relevant yeah, one. I've fair. seen that. So Agent we're Smith talking is about like that guy from the skill. <laughs> oh, okay, now that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, yeah. Yeah, now I got you. <laughs> Every, everyone understands that one. <laughs> Um, you don't you don't get a more like what I love about villains and they 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 veered maybe the Dark Knight had this effect they veer into like the whole uh, not not the Dark Knight sorry I think the James Bond did it a bit where like they start to have villains that you start to see a backstory and you start to see a I can see from their perspective how they've been wronged a relatable villain yeah and a hashtag we... Killmonger was right. Yeah, yeah, but that, that's exactly right. And it's like, mm. whilst I see the appeal of those, there is also a, just a really nice welcome place for villains that are just like, I am evil and I hate things. Yes. And that, you, that he's like the definitive one. Like his, his line yeah. about like, the purpose of all life is to end. He's just, just hates he's just shit. Hates everything. Yeah. yeah. He's so angry all the time. Yeah. 
he's and he so doesn't know why man. he's angry either. He just knows he's no. cross. Yeah, he's he's so good. Very interested. Like, because I I when it comes to the Matrix Four, Matrix Resurrection, I watched it like I watched it once when it came out, and mm. I've mostly forgotten about it. So yes. I'm very interested to see um, what what kind of happens with with his character and the differences and. I won't go too much into it because, you know, but, yeah. I'm well, excited I'm to talk about Mr. Smith. Mr. Yes. Smith, Agent Smith next week. Mr. Smith. Because um, from, from what I can remember about mm-hmm. Agent Smith next week, it's complicated but good stuff. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Um, sure. Yeah, so, so he overtakes Neo, but that was the plan all along because mm-hmm. he needed... They needed to get Smith into the source so then they could delete him, basically. So, yeah. haha, trick, you fell for it, dickhead. Um, um, so he gets like, deleted. No, this isn't fair. Yeah. Um, so he gets what deleted. What if sunglasses explode? Everyone explodes and they, like, turn into the the other ones, I guess. They turn back into who they were, maybe. Um, I don't know. I think they all explode. No, I think they turn... Because you see the Oracle's body. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I would imagine they turn back into people. Yeah. Let's go with that. Yeah. We've made the definitive call. <laughs> yeah. We we solved the matrix. Um. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it. The war's over. Everyone's having a big cheer. Um. They put Neo directed on a by thing. the Wachowskis. They 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 put Neo on a thing. On a what? They put him on like a slab. That he does, he does his Jesus scene, yeah, and and they lay him, they lay his crucified body down, yeah, um, and then what did you, when do you remember first seeing that? Do you remember if you knew that Neo had died or thought he died? Do you know? Fun fact: I when I saw this movie for the first time, I was I must have been like seven or eight years old, uh, and I went to the cinemas to see it with my dad, um, and and this is a certificate fifteen movie here in the UK. Um, which means you need to be 15 to watch it. It's not like in America where as long as you're with a parent, yeah, you can watch it. No, legally, you need to be 15 to watch this movie. Yeah. Um, so I remember the entire way there in the cinema, my dad was like, when's your birthday? And I was like, uh, 1987? <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to pass off his... I think I had my hair like spiked up very tall. Yeah. Uh, your dad had a day off and a dream. <laughs> yeah. He's like, let's go see The Matrix. And then he's like, two for The Matrix. And then the woman just looks at me like, no, he's 15. Don't worry about it. Yeah. I, I think obviously they're like, no fucking way. But whatever, I don't get paid enough for this. Just go yeah. I, I could not give a fuck. It's the Matrix. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's not going to be anything too scarring in here. Although that fucking that guy getting killed is pretty fucking. It was pretty gruesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But yeah, no, I think I knew he was dead. I I think I took it as he was dead because that's what it seemed like. Yeah. Yeah. So. No. I I just I kind of assumed that it was either way. It was the end. Like if he yeah. wasn't dead, he was gonna be dead. They like unplugged him, and they've always made a big thing of like. If you're unplugged, that's it. Yeah, and yeah, he's because he's. Well, they obviously kept him around to rebuild the next one, <laughs> didn't they? Because we we know that there's. Well, a yeah, we'll movie. get into that, but for the for the purposes of this movie <laughs> and how it was in 2003, the year of the Matrix, mm. um, he's dead. I sure hope that these machines don't start acting up again. <laughs> I I tell you what, I sure hope. Neil Patrick Harris doesn't start some shenanigans. I can't even remember what he does in that movie. I just know he's in it. Well, we'll see. Um, next week, when will you watch The Matrix? The new one. Did you have any little things to finish us off? Um, I've had no notes this entire time. But let me try to think of little things off the top of my head. I've got one little thing. Um, yes. There's not a lot of little things. Most because, like you said, there is three big scenes in yeah, the movie. It's, th- it's three scenes in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but my little thing um, is that Smith and Neo rocky each other. They do the famous double punch. <laughs> they do rocky each other, yeah. I remember having that thought. That's very good. Uh, so, yeah, that's I just, I just enjoy that. That's good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Um, little things... Kill us, fry us, burn us alive. There we go. That's <laughs> that, my little thing. You said that little thing like four times. <laughs> I know, but I enjoy it. It's a great line. Well, what a lovely, lovely time. Um, 
Uh, if you've enjoyed this episode, we have more. Uh, we are three movies into The Matrix, the last... Only one more to go. Yeah, join us next week on Fridays at 10 a.m. Uh, for our, our finale to The Matrix. Should we get dressed up since it's the last one? Should we get the leather trench coats and the and the Oakley sunglasses and everything? Well, that's going to be easier for you because that is I know that is in your wardrobe, the leather that trench is, coat. That is my exclusive look, yes. Yeah, along with all your other trench coats. Yes, of which um, I have many. Yeah, of course, various colours and, le- yes. and various leathers. <laughs> got snake skin, got cowhide. <laughs> I got them all, man. Uh, I'll, I'll wear some sunglasses if you will. <laughs> Lawrence will put on some sunglasses. Hey, I don't don't try me on this. I dressed up as a full fucking cat for Puss in Boots. You did. I don't know why. You didn't just... tell me though, so I couldn't dress up. You just. You just I didn't like, know yeah. until five minutes before, and then I was being practiced on. Yeah, give us give our Twitter a little follow. We're at another happy pod on Twitter. Uh, we can we can have a little chat there about the Matrix. Tell us if you understood the ending, and if you did, please try and explain it to us. Because as of right now, we still don't know. Should um, we do a segment at the end of the podcast where we recommend one fun thing that we enjoy, and it doesn't have to be like a movie. It can be like Going for a walk. A sandwich that we tried. A nice pizza sandwich. Remember when I made that pizza sandwich? I do. I do remember that. Yeah. Anyway, that's something to discuss. Not for now. I like the idea. We'll do it. Let's lock it in. We'll do it. Not now, but we'll do it. We'll do it starting after the Matrix. All right. All right. Well, there's enough little things and everything else going on in the Matrix anyway. Yeah, that's true. That's true. There is enough. Too many moving parts. Uh, Nathan, we have another podcast. I have no idea any information about it though could you perhaps share that with me well that worries me a little bit considering you are the the main co-host but lawrence um i certainly can it's called still got legs it's all about doctor who and we're making our way through the revival era we're about halfway through uh the second series at the moment david Tennant's first series um, and we're having a good time so come join us every week it's a brand new episode where we take a look uh, the weird and wonderful world uh, that is Doctor Who. And we're having a good, fun time with it. Share it with your Whovian mates. Share it with your mum. And your mum. Get a load of your mum. <laughs> uh, I think I've said everything. Review us. Give us a rating and shit. Um, that. Um, all right, bye, everyone. Is that it? Yeah, I did, nothing else is there. I've done it all. Is there any fun little banter we can have? <laughs> do you, do you want to do more do you, uh, this, yeah. uh, this podcast right now when we're currently approaching an hour and a half I do we yeah. did all our fun banter at the start is there any fun banter we can have what a manufactured <laughs> natural way of having banter well it's nice to end on some fun banter between us we've just been having a jovial chat for the last <laughs> 10 minutes anyway it's true it's true well, tell us a joke Lawrence why don't you tell everyone a nice little joke no, I have one. I know one joke, and it's fucking terrible. I'll tell well, you, but I'm bleeping it. Oh, is it like offensive? No, it's not offensive. But I'd rather not have it. I'd rather not have a clean recording of me saying it. No, go on. Well, I've, I'm still going to bleep it. No, don't bleep it. Let's end on a joke. I've told. I've already told you um, a nice wholesome it, joke. The what's the best thing about? Oh, come on now. It's t- <laughs> oh no, that's hor- That's horrendous. It's pretty bad. I'll t- did, I'll tell by you the way, I'll, did you did you bleep out my crimes against Elizabeth Olsen in the the last episode? I cut the whole segment. It was okay. damning for you. <laughs> it was damning for you. <laughs> I tell you, what, we'll end we'll end with this fun story. I once upon a time, uh, when I was I believe sixteen years old, I had an interview for a part time job at Waitrose. Um, Ooh, fancy. Yeah, and I was in a room with a bunch of these boring fucking cunts. And they were all in this. They were all sixteen. They're in their suits, right? So I, I was wearing smart casual. I was in, I think, I believe, like a pair of smart chinos and a shirt. Right? I think that's, I think that's the the best. You don't want to wear a suit to a fucking interview at a shop. Yeah, and you fucking. I'm not being funny. Right? Sixteen. Yeah. Give off. You look like you're wearing your dad's clothes. Yeah. Um. So anyway, I showed up. I thought I looked okay. Everyone else, yeah. you know, you immediately get the look of like this guy's not getting the job. I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. I had that. Anyway, we got in a circle. We did our, like, group fucking questionnaire or whatever the fuck it was. You know, like... Yeah, I hate interviews like that, where it's like... 
it's just bollocks. It's like fucking get to know our company values. I'm like, you sell ham. Like, <laughs> <laughs> fucking calm down with this bullshit. <laughs> you sell ham. <laughs> well, you do. And that's right. If you work at the bakery section at Waitrose, it's exactly yeah. what you're doing. Uh, and basically, the question that they asked uh, to everyone, and we all went around the circle, and I was in the middle of the circle. I was in a fortunate position. So I thought yeah. I was going to blow the, everyone's fucking socks off with my answer. They said, you can have one famous person round your house for dinner, who is it and what do you make them? And everyone was like, oh, I'll have David Beckham and I'll cook him steak. And the other people are like, I'll have John Lewis because he owns Waitrose and I'd make him something from John Lewis or whatever. Ah, oh, you fucking get your tongue out of their ass. Now. Yeah, and, th- and that's why I thought. I was like, I don't want to do something generic because there's nothing to it. I don't want to fucking spoon feed their ass like into my mouth. Yeah. So I went... For what I thought, genuinely, and still believe to this day, should have got me the job because it showed I had some fucking creative level of thought. Yeah. And my answer was, I'd have Bear grills round and I'd cook him whatever I had because he's happy drinking piss. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you say those words? No, I probably said like urine or something. Like, <laughs> uh, so I, 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 I fucking, I obviously formalised it. But yeah, and then everyone just, like, the guy after me... Yeah. Terrible day for him. What did he, he just say? He just had to pick up the floor again. He was like, because there was silence. And because everyone else had like their questions. Yeah. And no one asked me a single question. So this guy just kind of had to take the floor. Do you know what I would have said? What? I would have said Hitler so I could feed him poison. And then everyone <laughs> would have applauded. And then I'd be like, yes, thank you. <laughs> and you'd have been awarded free hams for life. <laughs> exactly. Like, Get this man a ham now. <laughs> And then I'd walk out of there with my free hand. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> anyway, what a great note to end on. I'm going to go to the toilet. Uh, see you next week. Say Bye. hello to your mum for me. And me. <laughs>